All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lau. I'm an associate professor uh, currently working at School of Chemical and Energy Engineering. And also, I'm a research uh, fellow at Advanced Membrane Technology Research Center, UTM. Today, is, uh, we are very honored to have uh, Professor Mustafa to, our, to, to, to be our distinguished uh, lecturer for this special event. And before we proceed further, I would like to uh, briefly introduce you uh, about uh, Dr. Mustafa and how he worked with uh, UTN researcher, which is me. So Professor Mustafa uh, has been visiting UTN two times, uh, one time in 2018 and second time in 2019. We have several projects uh, together with uh, Professor Mustafa. One of the projects we received uh, two years ago was Biflana Exchange Program uh, awarded by Tupita uh, from Turkey government. And last year, we also received one uh, international joint research project with uh, Professor Mustafa. And this time, uh, it was awarded by Malaysia Mosti and under International Collaboration Fund. So without further ado, I would like to pass to our Dean of uh, Faculty, Professor Lato Dafit, to further continue this event. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lau, uh, for chairing the session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to our 55th UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Muhammad Rafiq and I am the Dean of Engineering University Technology Malaysia. Today it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Mustafa Karaman from Konya Technical University, Turkey. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Dr. Mustafa Karaman received his BS and PhD degrees from Middle East Technical University in Turkey. He is now a full-time professor in chemical engineering department of Konya Technical University, where he has an active research lab that works on various national and international projects since 2010. He has previously undertaken research at MIT USA. Dr. Karaman is the preeminent researcher across Euro-Asia for the development of CVD nanocoating technologies. His research activities focus mainly on CVD coating technologies surface science and functional thin films. He and his team are developing various CVD techniques to functionalize many different types of material surfaces. Dr. Karaman also owns an R&D company, MCM, located in Konya Science Park since 2015 to commercialize the CVD technologies developed in the research lab. So that is a biography of our distinguished speaker. Here now is Professor Mustafa Karaman, from Konya Technical University, Turkey, with a talk on functional nano coatings. Professor Mustafa Karaman, over to you. Uh, Professor Rafiq, thank you very much. Uh, it's Mustafa Karaman speaking from Turkey, uh, Konya Technical University. Uh, in today's lecture, I will talk on chemical vapor deposition process, uh, the fundamentals and the applications. Uh, before starting, uh, I want to thank Professor Mohamed Rafiq and UTM for providing me this opportunity uh, to talk on my research topics in front of great UTM community. Uh, as Dr. Lau said before, I have been in UTM uh, twice, two times, both of which were great academic and cultural experiences for me, uh, thanks to our exchange projects and programs between me and Dr. Lau, Dr. YJ Lau from a chemical and energy uh, engineering uh, faculty. And now we have a fruitful collaboration since the start of our project. I always enjoy to be in Malaysia, a great country with very polite and friendly people. Uh, actually in Turkey, we always feel that Malaysia is our brother country. And after this uh, recent hard times, I hope that both countries will support much more academic interactions and collaborations. And now let me start uh, my lecture on uh, CVD, chemical vapor deposition process. Uh, let me share my screen. Chemical vapor deposition uh, of functional nanocoatings theory and applications in surface engineering, biotechnology, biomimetics, adhesion, and membranes. Uh, this is the table of contents of my presentation. I will first talk on functional coatings and thin film deposition strategies shortly, and then I will talk on the fundamentals of chemical vapor deposition, and I will continue with the selected applications. 
Uh, let me start with the functional coatings. Uh, actually, we use CVD, chemical vapor deposition process, to deposit uh, different types of functional coatings. The functional coatings are coatings that are deposited on a surface to give extra properties and characteristics compared to the base material or bulk. They are based on high value added coatings that are applied in the form of a thin layer. Actually, our main purpose is to add more uh, functions to a surface to obtain high value added products and technologically improved products. Uh, functional coatings uh, are usually applied on different kinds of substrates, such as textile, glass, polymer sheets, particles, metals, membranes, etc. By using different techniques, uh, such techniques can be wet techniques or dry techniques, I will explain later. Sol gel, spray coating, dip coating, vapor deposition processes, etc., uh, spin coating, are different techniques to add functional coatings on different surfaces. By function, mean, we mean that different functionalities. For example, self-cleaning, easy to clean surfaces, waterproof or resistant surfaces, anti-finger surfaces, photocatalytic surfaces, and many more. With the help of a proper functional coating, we change the physics and chemistry of the surface to impart a surface or desired property for the intended application. Here, in terms of added value, I want to give an example. Uh, for example, uh, I live in Turkey, uh, and Turkey is one of the major uh, textile producers of the world. Almost 4% of world's textiles are produced in Turkey, and usually one meter of a fabric, raw fabric, uh, sold one to two euros per meter. So, with the help of CVD, here you can see uh, the cost of adding a functional coating on the surface with CVD is around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 euros per meter. You can end up with very highly value added and technical textiles. For example, breathable and waterproof fabric, which can be sold as high as 15 to 20 euros per meter. Here you can see almost 20 fold increase in the added value. This is a very good improvement. And thanks to CVD, you can do this at very low costs. There are many thin film deposition strategies uh, applied both commercially in the academic literature. And there are basically two types. One is top-down approach and the one other one is a bottom-up approach. In the top-down approach, a polymer is synthesized before film forming, and then it is transferred to a substrate surface by a suitable method. Here you can see uh, the polymer solution, and after the initial synthesis, it must be transferred to the substrate surface in the form of a thin film. Here, since the polymer is synthesized before uh, the coating process, uh, it is easy to control the chemical structure. You don't uh, depend on the surface. There is not any surface restriction. This is an advantage, but you, the disadvantage is that you need to have a second stage to coat this material on the surface, which is a big problem. In the bottom-up techniques, the coatings are directly deposited on the surface from atoms or molecules with the help of a chemical reaction. Some functions, here are some factors making it difficult to control the structure. For example, solvent properties, temperature, and impurities. But everything happens at one stage, especially in CVD technique. And chemical vapor deposition is considered to be the prominent vapor-based bottom-up deposition technique, which can be, which is done completely uh, dry state. Let me explain the chemical vapor deposition process. Uh, chemical vapor deposition, uh, CVD, is the process of chemically reacting a volatile compound of a material to be deposited with other gases to produce a non-volatile solid that deposits on a suitable place substrate. The substrate is placed inside a reactor, usually a vacuum chamber, and precursors are fed to the system in the vapor phase. So, there is a chamber 
filled with precursors and we need an energy source to activate the chemical reactions to provide the activation energy to uh, start the uh, film forming reactions and solid products are obtained as a form of thin films fibers powders etc and some byproducts gas phase byproducts are uh, sent away from the chamber in the end so chemical vapor deposition is a complex process it's not easy to understand the complete theory the input flow rate the gases are forced uh, to enter the uh, reactor where the substrate is placed and the precursor vapors are diffused from uh, the bulk gas uh, to the surface through the surface with different kinds of mass transfer mechanism once the vapors are arrived at the surface, they are usually adsorbed at the surface, physically or chemically, depending on the uh, surface temperature. And in the end, after the chemical reactions at the surface, dense uniform films are obtained. So, as I said before, CVD is a complex process and the technology combines uh, many different scientific and engineering disciplines. The most important are thermodynamics, kinetics, fluid dynamics, chemistry, material science, physics, etc. Uh, very complex process. It's not easy to understand. But the, there are two things, two basic things to mention. Once a chemical, a CVD reaction is governed by thermodynamics. Actually, all chemical reactions uh, are governed by thermodynamics. Uh, which is the driving force, which indicates the direction of reaction. If a reaction will take place or not, thermodynamics will explain this to us. And by kinetics, chemical kinetics, which defines the transport processes and determines the rate controlling mechanism. In other words, how fast it, it is going, how fast the deposition rates. The deposition rates are determined from chemical kinetics, uh, but if a deposition will occur or not, it will be de determined from thermodynamics. There are many different analyses. Uh, in this lecture, I will just talk about on the basics, but details analysis uh, can be uh, found in literature. Uh, there are many different computer programs to calculate the rates, the thermodynamic feasibility, etc. cetera. Uh, in terms of thermodynamics, the desired CVD reaction like any other chemical reactions, will take place if the thermodynamics is favorable. That is, the free energy change of reaction is negative. Here in this figure, you can see reaction one and reaction two. For example, at 800 degrees Kelvin, the reaction one will not produce. It's not thermodynamically feasible because you can see delta G formation is positive, but the reaction two is favorable. So you can calculate this from thermodynamics. Here you can see the mechanism of chemical vapor deposition, precursor flow, some gas phase reactions, diffusion, adsorption on the surface, desorption, nucleation, and film growth. So, very complex process, and the chemical rate is determined from the combination of these states. There are some uh, advantages of CVD, I will mention about them. First of all, CVD is capable of producing a large variety of films and coatings possessing high purity and desirable properties. Usually, we deposit our polymers under vacuum, and vacuum atmosphere is very clean. And there are no solvents and any other impurities in the coating atmosphere. So, in the final products, which are the thin films, purity is very high. The capability of controlling the film stoichiometry makes CVD unique among other deposition techniques. You can um, tune the stoichiometry, I mean the chemical structure of the deposit easily by CVD technique. CVD has relatively low equipment and operation, equipment cost and operation expenses, and it is suitable for industrial batch and semi-continuous operations. CVD is very efficient technique, and uh, there are many different uh, variants of most of CVD developed until now, depending on the type of the reactor, type of the activation energy, and type of the precursor. 
Atmospheric pressure CVD and LP CVD are the most general ones. The CVD uh, systems are considered, are divided into two CVD reactor geometries, some cold wall systems and hot wall systems. In the cold wall systems, only the substrates is heated. In the hot wall system, the complete system is heated in a furnace. In order to deposit the functional polymers, there are relatively new and novel techniques. For example, laser assisted CVD, hot filament CVD, initiated CVD, and plasma enhanced CVD. My research topics are initiated CVD and plasma enhanced CVD, and today I will talk on them in more detail. Let me start with ICVD technique. In ICVD, the chemical species called the initiator are fed to the system and they dissociate into the reactive chemical species at low energy impulse due to their weak bonds. This is a general, in the right hand side, you can see the general wheel of a large scale ICVD chamber. It is a vacuum chamber, a little vacuum chamber, and it contains a filament array. Here you can see the filament array. And uh, at the bottom, you can see the uh, circular substrate. It's usually silicon vapor. And the reactor has a cool, cooling stage at the bottom. So uh, as a precursor gas, we feed initiator molecules. Here you can see a peroxide times initiator molecules. Such peroxides are dissociated into the radicals easily in the presence of a heat or a plasma. Here in ICVD, we use heat originating from the filaments. We resistively heat such filaments to get uh, enough temperature to dissociate the initiator into the radicals. Once the radicals are produced, these radicals diffuse from the top to the bottom, to the substrate surface. The basic reason behind the use of ice initiator in ICVD is to keep the filament temperature low enough, just to break the weak initiator bonds, so that the undesired monomer fragmentation and chemical functionality loss will be avoided. Here you can see the mechanism in more detail. We feed two types of precursors, monomer and initiator. It's quite like the usual uh, bulk phase polymerization system. But here everything is carried uh, in the gas phase, in the vapor phase under vacuum. Here you can see that uh, the monomer molecules pass through the filament array and absorb physically on the uh, substrate surface. Here the substrate is silicon vapor. Uh, the monomer molecules are not affected from the temperature here because temperature is not high enough to dissociate the monomer. It is just enough to dissociate the initiated molecules. For example, the initiated molecules are dissociated, diffused through the substrate where they reach the substrate surface and there they react with the absorbed molecules to start a fast polymerization reaction. So, in this way, you can have highly conformal polymer coating at very high speeds. This is the basic advantage. In, from the conformality, I mean that uh, the geometrically complex substrate are coated uniformly. For example, you can see a cross section of a uh, demonstration of cross section of a fabric you can see some fibers and with ICVD, you can coat conformally. The pores remains open. Conformal coatings just are on the fiber surfaces. In the blanket type coatings, which are usually uh, observed in the wet uh, top-down approaches, the pores are usually occluded and the fabric loses breathability and flexibility. So, the conformality and uniformity is great in ICVD. And here you can see the deposition rates, improvement in the deposition rate. Without initiator molecules, deposition rates are very, very low. But in the presence of initiator, here you can see the improvement in the deposition rate. Okay, this, is the, this was the story behind ICVD. Now let me talk a little on PECVD, Plasma Enhanced Chemical Vapor Deposition Technique. Actually, in our lab, we have two systems. Uh, we ha they have nearly identical uh, hardware, but the activation mechanism in both techniques are different. 
In ICVD, we were using the flamens. But in uh, plasma enhanced CVD, we use plasma discharge to initiate the polymerization reactions. Here you can see uh, the plasma discharge, we, uh, plasma generation via electrical discharge. The radicals are generated from the monomers itself inside the highly energetic plasma zone. So once such radicals are generated, they diffuse through the surface and they polymerize on the substrate surface. So here, the monomers are dissociated in the radicals. The monomer fragmentation here is unavoidable, unavoidable, which is actually not good in terms of polymer functionality. In ICVD, the monomer molecules are never dissociated, never fragmented, and they reach the uh, surface uh, without fragmentation, and the monomer functionality are fully uh, remains uh, in the as deposited polymers. But here, P in PECVD, some level of uh, the functionality loss always observed. But uh, in our research, we want to keep as low as possible. So to achieve this, we need to have low energy per molecule. So the energy dose per monomer, which can be expressed by Yasuda factor, can be kept as low as possible to prevent uh, undesired monomer fragmentation. So here you can see on the right-hand side, the top view of one of our PCVD system, you can see the discharge glowing in bright pink color. This is a monomer discharge and a substrate is placed in the bottom of the reactor. The reactor top is covered by a thick quartz uh, glass so that we can have a visual access to the substrate surface. The uh, copper antenna is placed at the top and that copper antenna is uh, connected to a plasma generator. We apply 13.56 megahertz uh, plasma po uh, power to the antenna which helps to discharge the bright plasma. And then after the initial discharge, the fast deposition rate start. You can see on the left, uh, the schematic representation of the system. Uh, and uh, I want to explain this. This uh, very high polymer deposition can be obtained at, at power levels as low as one watt, which is very, very low power level. Uh, as I said before, this is very important to have uh, polymers deposited at low plasma powers to prevent the monomer uh, dissociation and to help uh, to have polymers with very high functionality. So here are some examples of our CVD equipment used in the lab. In the top left, we have our lab scale ICVD system. The right, we have PECVD system. Basically, they have the similar hardware, a stainless steel vacuum chamber, control equipment. The process control equipments in uh, ICVD and PECVD are very important. They need to be good. They need to have good control systems for pressure, for temperature, and for flow rate in order to have uh, repeatable results and good results. Uh, there are many different uh, mechanistic steps occurring simultaneously inside a CVD reactor. So process control is very important here. In the bottom right, you can see rotating PECVD system. This CVD system is very similar to a classical CVD system with a basic difference. Here, a glass vacuum chamber is rotated back and front during the deposition under the vacuum, we usually place a powder substrate here, particulate solids, in order to make some functional coatings on them. But to obtain a highly uniform coatings, the whole system should be rotated. So it's like a washing machine, but working under vacuum and in the presence of a plasma. So in this uh, system, we obtain highly uniform coatings around very geometrically co complex particulate solids. We also uh, try to commercialize 
so the results of our research. So we are developing pilot scale system. On the bottom left, you can see our large scale system, which is capable of coating very large pieces of substrates. So the chamber, a vacuum chamber is large. It has a large filament array inside and it is capable of producing ICVD coatings at larger scales. This is a general system, uh, PECVD system, but ICVD is more or less the same. We usually have a vacuum chamber, a pressure gauge, a correct pressure gauge, selection of the correct pressure gauge is very important here. We usually use capacitance times of pressure gauges. We have a vacuum pump. We always deposit materials under vacuum. We have some PID temperature controllers, mass flow controllers to control the flow rates and temperature of the monomer and initiator. And we have in PECVD a RF radio frequency plasma generator, a matching box, and they are all connected to the vacuum chamber. So in ICVD, different from this configuration, only difference is uh, the filament array. So apart from or um, the ICVD doesn't have the plasma generator, but it has a DC uh, source. Uh, to supply uh, electricity to the filament arrays to resistively heat to the filaments to the desired filament temperatures. So until now in literature, many different types of acrylic, metacrylic, styrenic and other classes of uh, materials, monomers containing a polymerizable vinyl bonds have all been successfully deposited by ICVD and PCVD. Flowing two or more monomers simultaneously into the reactor creates a thin film ICVD, copolymers or terpolymers, which is the power of ICVD. You can obtain such copolymers and terpolymers easily by simultaneous feeding uh, different types of monomers having different functional uh, side groups. And controlled cross-linking of the films can be introduced by empl employing divinyl and trivinyl monomeric species. For example, antimicrobial, superhydrophobic, superhydrophobic, hydrophilic, sacrificial, biopacification, entering, patternable, and much more conductive. Many different types of functional materials are deposited on virtually any types of substrate surfaces. These were just basics of the CVD processes, ICVD and PCVD. Now, let me talk a little on some selected applications. We have many different types of applications. Here I have chosen the selected ones, but there are many more applications that we are developing in the lab because we have a suitable system, we have designed a suitable system, and ICVD and PCVD has a power of functionalizing virtually any surface as long as the surface is solid. So the first example is hydrophobic coatings. Uh, we usually use textiles and paper as substrates to make their surfaces hydrophobic. Uh, as I showed you in the beginning, ICVD usually uh, makes conformal coatings, which is very suitable for textiles. And textile fabrics are and fibers are suitable material, suitable substrate for uh, ICVD. Highly hydrophilic materials can be converted to highly hydrophobic or ultra hydrophobic with the help of CVD uh, in just minutes, seconds. And the uh, in that paper, we showed that our coatings are uh, biocompatible also, and they have huge commercial potential. We use a chemical vapor deposition to encapsulate uh, the powdered substrates in rotating bed PCVD system that I showed you previously. Uh, usually, such particulate materials are used as fillers in polymer matrix to make polymer nanocomposites. So the major problem in the synthesis of polymer nanocomposites is that such fillers are not dispersed efficiently in the matrix. They tend to agglomerate because of the poor interaction between the matrix and the substrate surface. 
particle surface. If we apply very thin layer of CVD coating on the particle surface, we have the power of improving the interaction between the matrix and the material. So in this study, we uh, improved the dispersion of carbon nanotubes in uh, electrospun polyacryl neutral fiber. We deposited a hydrophobic material using PECVD. Here you can see carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotube has a, a nanomaterial itself. It has just only 10 nanometer diameter. And with the help of PCVD, we managed to have very thin uh, films of very, th very thin films of uh, polymer layers on the uh, substrate surfaces. The, another example, encapsulation of various fillers. Chemical and plasma surface modification of uh, coconut waste. A biomaterial surface can be converted to a useful surface as a filler material in bio-based composite materials with the help of CVD as well. Here we also deposited a thin functional coating by using our rotating pad PECVD system to make, uh, to make better composites, nanocomposites. Uh, to encapsulate uh, the uh, coconut waste. Uh, it's a particulate material. We use CVD and uh, we improved the uh, mechanical and other properties of the um, composites with the help of CVD. Encapsulation of down nanoscale. Actually, this study was our first, uh, as far as I am correct, first uh, study originating from our collaboration between Amtec and uh, my research group, synthesis of titanium nanotubes. Titanium nanotubes are nanomaterials, as the name implies. We coated the material surfaces with conductive polyaniline via rotating pad PCVD to improve, to enhance the uh, visible light photodegradation. On the right-hand side, you can see the improvement. The final material has superior photocatalytic activity under both UV and visible light irradiation, and the material improved reusability and recyclability thanks to the very thin layer of uh, polyaniline layer around the titanium nanotubes. So encapsulation, non wetting particles. In that study, we used chemical vapor deposition to coat the surfaces of expanded perlite particles. Expanded perlite are usually found in uh, different parts of Turkey. Uh, they are very hydrophilic material. Here you can see uh, in the colored water, the water wets the surfaces of perlite easily. But after CVD coating of a hydrophobic material, you can see at the right hand side, the fluoro coated expanded perlite powders are never wetted with the colored water. So we can obtain the super hydrophobic material, not just on the textile surfaces, not just on the flat surfaces, but also on the powder surfaces, down to nanoscale. So this is, again, the power of CVD technique. Not only the hydrophobic, we also make hydrophilic materials. So it, as I said before, the perlite is a hydrophilic material, but in order to make it more hydrophilic, to open new application areas, for example, hydroponic agriculture, uh, we improved the wetting properties, the expanded perlite by very thin organic coating, again, under the PCVD conditions. So you can see after the coating, the geometry of the perlite surface doesn't change. What changed? The only the chemical structure, only a few nanometers of thin film are deposited on the surface, which change the whole story, make the material hydrophilic, hydrophobic, antibacterial, conductive, anything you want. Here we showed the improvement in the hydrophilic properties of expanded perlite, the contact angle before the coating was 41.9, and after the coating, the contact water contact and the value decreased 
down to 10.7. So, and the material had more than 20% increase in water holding capacity while preserving the porosity. It pre pre preserved the porosity because the technique is highly conformal. The pores of the material are not obstructed with the polymer. So, biomimetics is another study. We use uh, ICVD to make biomimetic coating for folk harvesting. We are collaborating with Durham University to develop folk harvesting coatings. Uh, which will be uh, gain more importance, uh, I believe, in near future uh, because of the recent climate change and global warming. Uh, we found uh, in this study, uh, we found uh, a, a plant called Sol Sola Crassa in the arid places of Turkey, dry places. This plant uh, obtained water not from the land, but from the air, in the fog. So it captures fog to collect water. Uh, we use ICVD to replicate the surface properties of this material uh, to synthesize artificial fog harvesting surfaces. And actually we did, we obtained good results after the replication of this material. And again, ICVD can be uh, used uh, in uh, biomimetics to obtain biotemplated materials. Materials present in nature can be copied to the synthetic materials, which show exactly the same or similar functional properties as the materials make in the nature. We also deposited some thymol responsive polymer coatings, which is a very important research uh, area now in my group. We also collaborating with Durham University to obtain such thymol responsive coatings. Uh, for example, uh, in this paper, we uh, deposited uh, pH responsive poly diisopropyl aminoacyl methylate thin films. Uh, we deposit such materials on top of electrospawn uh, fabric mats. You know, uh, as if you know this material, it's very delicate, polymer nanofibers. So in any other technique, you cannot uh, functionalize the surfaces. But thanks to ICVD, which is low temperature and solvent-free technique, we were able to functionalize the surfaces of that material efficiently with uh, functional uh, nano coatings having a tertiary amine functionality, which shows different wetting states at low and high uh, pHs. So the contact angle uh, changes from wetting to non wetting states at uh, low to high pH, respectively. So another study is antibacterial coatings. Uh, we deposited quaternary ammonium metacolate polymers by ICVD, which showed very high antimicrobial activity, uh, low toxicity, and high durability. So we are able to deposit such antibacterial surfaces uh, on different types of substrates, for example, glass, fabric, and PET, uh, polyethylene uh, terephthalate sheets, which are all real world, world substrates. And our main purpose here is to show that ICVD can be used to deposit antibacterial coatings on top of many different substrates uh, at very high speeds and at very high functionalities. With the functionality, I mean the antibacterial activity. And uh, we showed in the study that our tertiary amine containing coatings are highly antibacterial. There are different modes of bacterial killing uh, materials uh, found both in literature in commercial uh, commercially. For example, uh, some surfaces uh, repel the bacteria. Uh, some uh, surfaces kill the bacteria by leaching an antibacterial agent to the atmosphere. And some uh, surfaces kill the bacteria upon contact. And 
our uh, bacteria killing mechanism fits the, 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 the last one, the contact killing surface. For example, silver is highly used as the antibacterial agent in many materials commercially. Uh, silver has a leaching mechanism to kill the surface, but you know, it is uh, in near future, I think the use of silver will be banned because silver not only kills the bacteria, uh, harmful bacteria, but also kills the harmless bacteria and also uh, leaching uh, mechanism develops antibacterial res resistance. So our advantage is that our thin film are kept on the surface, the mechanism is contact killing, does, does not leach, our materials does not leach into the uh, atmosphere, into the water, so the bacteria kill up in contact with the surface, which is very good in terms of human health and um, the environment as well. So uh, we use the CVD, hydrophobic CVD coating for the efficient uh, material for graphene transfer. Maybe most of us, most of you know the graphene, a very useful material and graphene is deposited uh, by chemical vapor deposition technique on a catalyzed surface. Uh, at very high level of purity, but once you deposit the graphene on a catalyzed surface, you need to transfer it to a, a real-world substrate to make use of it, to make use of the excellent properties of graphene, which is the difficult part. So in this study, we functionalized the surface of paper with a hydrophobic material and transfer the graphene on top of that material. Because of this ICVD coating on the paper surface, the graphene transfer efficiency was improved uh, very much. So we can transfer the graphene easily on top of paper surface. So in this uh, image, you can see the conductive graphene coating on the paper surface, uh, which is uh, not possible uh, with any other techniques, but Thanks to ICVD, all dry, dry nature, high functionality, high deposition rates, low temperature, we could functionalize every surface. In this example, the paper surface. You know the paper, very fragile material. You cannot use wet coating techniques or high temperature techniques to functionalize paper surfaces. But thanks to ICVD, the low temperature method, we could uh, functionalize the paper surfaces to transfer the graphene. And here you can see uh, the light. The material is conductive at large scales. Uh, we also developed the roll-to-roll -roll, uh, systems uh, to make large scale coatings. Uh, as I said in the beginning of uh, my presentation, Turkey is a textile country. So many textile companies are interested in our technology. That's why we developed this roll-to-roll -roll system uh, to functionalize fiber surfaces. Roll-to-roll -roll ICVD. This, this is, as far as I know, one of the first examples of CVD, ICVD in a roll-to-roll -roll system to make a super hydrophobic symptoms on flexible substrates. Here, we use bamboo fabric. You know bamboo, very, very hydrophilic material. And after coatings in minutes, uh, we could obtain ultra hydrophobic bamboo surfaces, which can be used in many, many different applications. Um, and the durability of our coating is very, very high. Hydrophilic ICVD coatings on hollow fiber membranes. As I said you before, we are collaborating with MTech to make some collaborative work on membrane science. The Amtank is uh, producing very good uh, base membranes for us. We use such membranes as substrates uh, to make uh, these surfaces functional with desired functionalities to improve membrane performances. For example, here in this study, we deposited hydroxypropyl metacrylate, a hydrophilic film, hydrophilic material on top of uh, polyvinyl DN fluoride hollow fiber membranes. We were able to conformally coat 
the surfaces of that membrane materials and in the as a result we showed that permission and rejection of water values uh, improved very much after icvd coating again the collaboration uh, again a work originated from our collaboration uh, with amtech icvd coating on thin film composite membranes for improved uh, falling resistance as i said before we use virtually any types of substrates and membranes are excellent material excellent substrates for us we use in this study thin film composite membranes uh, for to improve the falling resistance of of it a green approach why do we call a green approach to our system our material or system cvd is a green technique because it uses very little energy in pcvd as i said before just one watt and in icvd the energy just supplied to the filament very low level of energies the energy consumption is very low and there is no water and solvents so completely dry solvent free green approach to modify virtually any surfaces polyamide thin film composite membrane surfaces were treated with icvd uh, uh, hydrophilic acrylic acid and hydroxyacetyl methacrylate were deposited on the surfaces uh, of uh, the membranes and the falling resistance were improved dramatically after coating such materials so there are some other application we uh, use uh, icvd or pcvd for many different types of application i also have a company mcm located in konya science park our technique is very efficient so i want i don't want the technique and the materials keep in the laboratory i trust the material i trust the technique uh, very much so i want to commercialize it and make the technology available for everyone so for example in the top left you can see the oil water separator just you know a stainless steel mesh a very cheap material can be functionalized with a polymer coating icvd polymer coating and after that the material passed through the oil but not the water so oil and water can be separated easily at the bottom you can see an anti fog coating you can see on the left the coated material on the right uncoated material one is fogged the other one is uh, not so we can use this technology to make anti fog coating for example a face mask mask uh, the half of face mask are func is functionalized by icvd coating which is uh, now um, anti fog you can see uh, the view is very clear on that part where there's an icvd coating and the other part there is not a, not coating so these and some others uh, were just some practical examples of the applications of our material or team films we uh, not always uh, publish our uh, most work we we keep them uh, for commercial applications we keep them secret and many of the coating receipts are patent pending so cvd as i said before is not a just lab technique is commercially applicable technique and we dedicate our research mostly for commercial applications i have got uh, a uh, spin out company as i said before mcm uh, we are producing large scale cvd systems roll to roll cvd system graphene cvd systems lab scale research reactors and we provide coating services as well recently we are developing a lab scale a uh, research reactor which will be a uh, unexpensive uh, cvd system and we want to reach as many uh, researchers uh, or lab as we can to distribute the advantage of cvd technique as i said before i don't want to keep the technology in my lab i just want to share and distribute the technology everywhere both universities r&d companies and large companies this was the end this was the end of my presentation uh, my work were supported by turkish scientific uh, uh, and research council i thank tubitak for the support uh, my research group name is octopus and uh, i want to have special thanks to uh, the recent members of octopus research group 
Mehmet Gürsoy, Emine Sevgili, Hüseyin Şakalak, Emre Çıtak, En Kurtuluş Yılmaz. Uh, they are uh, making great effort in the lab uh, to prepare our coatings, uh, coating recipes and systems as well. And thank you very much for listening to me. And now uh, I want to answer your question in Q&A section. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lo, I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry, I, I mute the audio. <laughs> thank you very much. So first of all, thank you, Dr. Professor Mustafa, for a very impressive uh, presentation. And uh, for some who just uh, joined after we the event start, I would like to tell you, Professor Mustafa actually is our visiting uh, researcher uh, two times in UTM. And we have several projects with Professor Mustafa, and uh, we have at least, I think, 10 publications together. Yeah. And I personally like the PSVD method very much. The first thing is, it is very fast. And in certain case, we are able to get the surface motivation done in less than one minute. And uh, we can use a sample immediately after surface motivation. And the second thing is, the, the PVC method, I think if you work on a PVC, uh, I mean, surface motivation method before, most of them, they need a solvent, organic solvent to uh, during the process. But PVC require no any solvent and no any washing. So this is actually fast and very, very green. There's a reason why uh, we still continue to work with Wasser Mustafa. And uh, so I'm not sure uh, whether I can see any question uh, from the Facebook. Let me check. Yeah. I can see a question. Uh, there is a one question. What are the industrial application of anti-fogging coating? Yeah, such anti-fogging coatings are used in many uh, different places. For example, mirrors used in the bathrooms. So in the bathrooms, because of heat and moisture, most, most of the time uh, you cannot see the mirror because of the fog layer. So <coughs> it can be used to prevent such things in the bathrooms or in, on, in the cars to improve the safety and on goggles as well and the face mask as I showed in my presentation uh, and the application areas depends on your imagination. So as I said before, we can uh, functionalize many different surfaces, virtually any surfaces so that anti-fogging coating and any other coatings are applied in many different industries and um, it, they, they can be used in uh, household items, in cars, in other machine parts as well. Um, I don't know. It depends on the imagination. So okay. uh, what I can uh, say here that uh, we can deposit virtually any material conformally and at very high speed. This is the magic behind the CVD. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a second question uh, from uh, Muhammad Afiti. He's asking, recently I visited a Tesla firm. They use a technique called sublimation uh, printing non-Tesla. Is this similar to CVD? Will the CVD only work in vacuum? Yeah, sublimation print. I don't know the uh, sublimation printing process very much, but I think that is a kind of PVD technique, uh, physical vapor deposition. In CVD, we have a chemical change. A CVD doesn't work on the under vacuum. Uh, thermodynamics will uh, predict it. Uh, there are some atmospheric pressure PCVD processes as well, also ICVD processes, but mostly to have uniform coatings uh, and to have very little uh, raw materials, uh, I prefer to use vacuum because vacuum is a very clean atmosphere to obtain uh, very high functional coatings. But uh, the major disadvantage of vacuum system is that you need to have the whole thing under vacuum. You need to have a whole vacuum, very big vacuum chamber, very big vacuum pumps, uh, which increase the uh, investment costs and operation expenses. But uh, I know uh, there are some commercial applications of atmospheric pressure PECVD techniques as well, especially for hydrophilic modification of surfaces. 
So vacuum is not a must, but a good thing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, one question from our center, uh, from a student, Sherry Cook. She's asking, may I know the precursor will react chemically or physically with the substrate using PCVD? Well, actually in PCVD, in our technique, uh, many material either react chemically or physically with the substrate surface. It depends on not the precursor, but the processing conditions, the substrate temperature, plasma power, uh, uh, flow rates, the precursor type as well. But, um, for example, glycidyl metacrylate, uh, some uh, materials having amino site groups or acidic site groups, they are all uh, reacted with the substrate surface. Uh, actually, uh, not only the precursors, but also the substrate uh, surface chemistry is also important for this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think we have a last one question from uh, Professor Nordin. Mama Yusuf from our School of uh, Mechanical Engineering. He's asking is if your CVD coating can be used to coat cutting tools. Yes, cutting. exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. Possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, possible. And uh, for example, I never tried this, but I'm thinking of deposing some CVD layers to improve uh, the properties of uh, cutting tools, especially uh, for to improve uh, to improve the hardness uh, and uh, to make the service life higher for the cutting tools. Uh, for example, diamond-like coatings, very hard materials, titania coatings, it can be deposited by CVD efficiently uh, on top of cutting tools. Okay. Uh, so far, I didn't see any more questions from the audience. I think uh, we are... Oh, sorry. One, one more question. One more question. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it possible for us to control the degree of polymerization? One student from our center, she's asking. Of course. Yeah, we can control the degree of polymerization, uh, the chamber pressure, the temperature. Again, again, the uh, processing conditions depend on this, and degree of polymerization uh, can be controlled efficiently with the CVD technique. But since the, our films are usually having nano thickness, it's not easy to measure the degree of polymerization. Okay. And uh, we have uh, one more question coming in. Uh, and Mr. Muhammad Afifi, he's asking, will CVD become a good replacement uh, for the electroplating? What is your opinion? I think so. Yeah, you know, electroplating is not an environmentally friendly process. It damages uh, water sources, environment, land very much. Uh, and uh, I agree, CVD uh, can be a good replacement of electroplating. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think so far there's no more questions. And uh, just uh, additional information for our audience. We have uh, one more uh, lecture on. Uh, 30th September, which is related to membranes, will be given by Professor uh, Stephen Gray from Victoria University on coming two days. So if uh, there's no more question, I would like to thank again uh, Professor Musa for delivering a, a very interesting presentation. And I think uh, for mm -hmm. the audience, if mm -hmm. you have any question or query you want to ask Professor Mustafa, you can actually contact him via email. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. there are many uh, questions in the comments part. I just realized many questions and I want all audience, uh, interested audience to email me. Maybe I can write uh, my email in the comments part. I don't yes, know how yes, to write. Yes. I, I, I will uh, write for you. I will provide yeah. your email address if, to them. Yeah, if yeah. you can write uh, interested, uh, I will be happy to answer the questions of interested audience. Yeah. Okay. So I will provide later on uh, in the Facebook your email address for the audience and if any question they will ask it. Okay. So uh, with this, I would like to thank everyone and I wish you have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank See you very you much. Thank you yeah. very much. Have a nice day, everyone. Okay.